Hello, my name is Robert Kernahan. Welcome to my workshop here in sunny Northern Ireland. Today I'm going to try and show you some of the techniques I use to make this furniture. First of all, we'll have a look at the raw material, which is the wood. This is some of the wood I like to use when I make my furniture. All my furniture is made out of hardwoods. This here is a piece of curly maple. It has a very curly grain and you may be able to see the curl here and this piece which has been planed. Once this is oiled or stained, the grain takes up the stain or the oil in a different manner and it really pops the grain and it becomes very beautiful indeed. Here's an example of how this wood is used. This is the back base of a chair. The front surface is maple. The middle bit, two laminations of ash, which makes it very flexible. And the back has a walnut accent. So that's some of the woods which I use. One of the first things I do when I start to make a chair is to make the rockers. Now the rockers are curved, obviously, and they're made out of nine strips of wood. Each strip is quite flexible and when they're glued together over a form then they take the shape of the form and once the glue hardens then it stays that shape. I'll just cut the last strip for this rocker now. This is the uh, form for the rockers. Rocker strips go on like this here. We obviously put glue in between them. And once they're all on, we clamp them down with this piece on top. Apply a clamp and let the glue harden for 24 hours. So obviously we don't have time to do that. So here's one which just came out of the form yesterday. Obviously it's still got glue in the sides. So after it's planed and cleaned up, it looks like this here. This is the form for the back braces. The back braces are each made out of four pieces of wood, two layers of ash in the centre to make them flexible, a layer of the wood that the chair is going to be made from at the front, and in this case there is a contrasting piece of walnut on the back. This makes the back braces very flexible. This is one of the key features which makes the chair so comfortable. Once the back braces come out of the form and the glue is dried, then they're all individually shaped. The grain is also chosen for the back braces so it runs naturally across the back of the chair. You can see here the dark grain here has a mirror image from this back brace to this one. That's how the back braces are made. Let's have a look at how the seat is shaped. These are two chair seats. This is curly maple which is almost finished. This one is only half finished and requires a bit more grinding. This grinding is done by hand and it's very important to get this side of the seat in the same shape as this side of the seat. Okay, that's how the seat's done. Let's show you how the back legs are sawn on the bandsaw. This is a back leg ready to be fitted to a chair. This is sawn out of a piece of wood. In fact, it's a substantial piece of wood here. It takes about 35 board feet to make a rocking chair. So I, I'll just saw this leg out now on the bandsaw. This is a leg uh, partially finished to be fitted onto a seat. Uh, you can see there's a lot of shaping goes on. Uh, whenever the leg is, comes off the band so it's totally square so it all has to be rounded over and uh, rounded over here and then the joint has to be cut carefully and fitted to the, to the seat. We've look, had a look at some of the major components which goes to make a chair. Now it's going to be very interesting to see if these things can actually fit together.
This is a child's rocking chair. It's made in curly maple, which is a very interesting curly green. It's a very fine wood and it's lovely to work with. But the finishing is very, very important. I mean, you can spend days, weeks even, making a piece of furniture and if the finishing isn't right, then it's a disaster. The key to finishing is a very fine surface to start with. So this is achieved by sanding. And in fact, about 25% of the entire time it takes to make a chair is the finishing, mainly the sanding. They sand it so smooth that they really just need to finish with one coat of Danish oil. On the darker woods, the white maple chairs, we finish those in Osmo oil because the Danish oil tends to yellow them too much. I would like to hope they would last for generations. In fact, I see these as heirloom pieces to be passed down through generations. And that's why each chair has an inscription and on the side of the seat, you know, a verse or, or a quotation and the date it was made for and who it was commissioned by. It makes it a unique piece of furniture. So there you have it. I hope you find that short video informative and interesting. My name is Robert Kernahan. I make fine furniture. For more information, go to my website, rkernahanfurniture.com. Thanks very much for watching. See you again soon. Goodbye.